Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to Bee and K Bees for the beginning of our third part of our crash course. This section is going to be maybe five or six videos and it's going to cover pests, parasites, diseases, and varroa management, which is probably the most important lesson I can teach you. So there's a lot to cover. Let's just get right into it. Well, wait, today's video is going to be on uh, pests and parasites. We're going to name them and name the problems that they bring. So first up is honeybee pests. First up in that uh, realm is wax moths. Uh, the greater and lesser wax moths are some of the most uh, well-known and most frustrating honeybee pests that there are. Um, they're, like they sound, they're just regular ugly moths that will move into the dark boxes that don't have bees in them or that don't have enough bees in them, um, and they'll lay eggs. And the eggs emerge into wax moth larvae, and wax moth larvae trail silk throughout the combs as they burrow through and eat and destroy everything. And then when those wax moth larvae go to pupate, they'll go to the side of your box on the inside and chew out a little cavity, creating even more damage. So wax moths are worthwhile to avoid, and my best uh, solution to wax moths is just that to avoid them from getting into your hive in the first place. And to do that, you keep a happy, happy, and healthy hive that is occupying the vast majority of the vacancy inside, um, and they'll have the ability to keep stuff free. Now, for your boxes that don't have bees in them, like all the boxes that are surrounding me right now, um, there are a couple of different methods to keep them out. Number one, and the easiest and you know best used, and I would love to be able to continue to use it, and what I used to use, is sunlight. Um, if you have a barn or whatever with some open windows or a big wide open door that sunlight can bask in on those boxes and into those boxes, that'll keep those moths out. They don't like sunlight, uh, and that's just a great way of doing it. Now, if you don't have the ability to keep them out in available sunlight, you can try to seal the boxes up in plastic, but be very, very careful that those seals are perfect because if there is a crack or a rip in the plastic, that, mo that moth will get in and that's just a haven. That's a beautiful situation for a moth. Um, and then the other uh, method and probably the most commonly used method are mothballs, but be careful here because you must use para moth balls, not the regular moth balls that your grandma uses in her, you know, sweater closet. Uh, so the active ingredient must be paradichlorobenzene, not naphthalene. Naphthalene will uh, sink into the combs and the chemicals will never ever leave and that's bad for your bees and bad for the honey and all that. So stay away from the naphthalene ones and get the para moth balls. Sometimes they're called moth crystals. But regardless, the uh, active ingredient is paradichlorobenzene, not naphthalene. Okay, so here's a picture of uh, some wax moth damage. It gets a lot worse than that, though. <clears throat> All right, and then up next are small hive beetles. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with small hive beetles too much here in Michigan. Uh, they might be a little bit worse this year because this winter was super super mild uh, but generally the cold and the freeze kills the wax or the small hive beetles off so that you know we don't really have any really bad infestations generally the ones that we do see are imported and they're few and far between but if you're south of me or if you're concerned in any way you do see small hive beetles you know the the best method once again is to keep a really well populated happy heavy and healthy hive um, but if you do have an issue, another way of dealing with them are, there are a bunch of different beetle traps, but there are also unscented Swiffer sheets that the beetles will just get caught in. And that's, gen that's pretty much the industry standard at this time. So the problem uh, with small hive beetles, though, is the fact that these little tiny beetles get in and find little crevices to stay away from the bees, and they lay little eggs and these eggs hatch into small hive beetle larvae that look quite a lot like wax moth larvae. They're a little bit smaller, but they do different things. They burrow the same, but they leave yeast uh, wherever they go. And this yeast slimes over the hive and makes it not good for bee or human consumption. It actually ferments it. 
So that is one of the main reasons why you want to keep small hive beetles away from your hive or keep the numbers very, very low. Keep the colony in a great ability to defend against small hive beetles because they will slime and destroy everything. But once again, the solution is to keep uh, just a really good, uh, well-populated hive. And then if you do have an issue or if you do see beetles, uh, consider getting a beetle trap or using an unscented Swiffer sheet on the tops of the frames. Uh, they'll get caught in there and that's so effective it's kind of slowly becoming the industry standard. Here is a picture of a couple of small hive beetles next to some bees that should be doing a better job of keeping them out. All right now we're on to some less uh, important pests like hornets and wasps. You have a big issue obviously hornets and wasps want the honey and they want the brood and they want to kill the bees and eat the bees and so they can be a problem but as is the case with any other pest a really active and healthy hive in an appropriately sized cavity is usually more than enough to keep the wasps at bay if you do have a lot of problems with wasps you can reduce your entrance size on your hive and you can also put out a wasp trap that would use like meat and some other like liquid uh, enticement that has no uh, action on the bees. The bees don't care for it at all and the wasps will go in and die. Uh, they're effective. I don't use them. I just keep, you know, hives that have the ability to defend and I generally don't see any huge problems with hornets or wasps. Mice. Uh, mice cause problems, they pee on everything, they chew frames. I just so happen to have a frame here that was chewed by some mice. I probably have some others here uh, near me. I've had mice problems quite a lot. They don't usually mess with hives that are doing well. So usually they'll mess in a hive that, uh, that has moved up in their box and they'll hang out, the mice will hang out lower or they'll move into hives that are already dying or dead. Um, either way, the best solution is an active and healthy hive to prevent the mouse from coming in. And then also there are tons of different mouse guards. Uh, hardware cloth, um, I believe like half inch hardware cloth is the industry standard as far as a mouse guard goes. Uh, you probably noticed in my videos that I'm not the best at uh, preventing mice from getting into my hives. So maybe I'm not the best person to listen to here. Uh, but yeah, mice are worthwhile to keep out of your hives. Skunks. Skunks are uh, attracted to bees in the same way bears are. They will scrape the combs clean, eat all the brood, and they'll eat live bees. Um, the same solution here, keep an active and heavy and healthy hive, and uh, keep your hives elevated if you do have an issue. Uh, generally, skunks don't like to bear their belly to the bees, and if the bees start stinging their belly, they're gonna take off, and usually an elevated hive pushed back on the hive stand is more than enough to keep skunks away. Um, I do have skunk problems every now and then on my smaller mating hives, so that can become a problem, but when we do have that, we usually do a live trap and just bring them a few miles away, and generally that's enough to uh, dissuade them from coming back and causing further issue. Bears are a huge problem that we're actively dealing with in more than one yard. Um, you really, really have to try to spread your bees out and uh, try to prevent the, the bear from getting a taste of what's inside those boxes. Because once that bear does get a taste of what's inside those boxes, there's almost nothing you can do to prevent him from coming back. Even a really high powered solar fence, if that bear has already tasted the brood inside those hives, he's just gonna deal with the shock and walk right through it. Um, so. Install your bear fences before they get up or get into your bees if you're in a bear active area. If you're in a bear active area and you don't like the idea of installing a bunch of bear fences, spread your bees out to a bunch of different areas so that one bear can't do you a whole bunch of problem. And the instant you see a sign of a bear issue in your yard, move all those bees somewhere else because that bear will be back and he will continue to cause you more headache. Ants and spiders. Um, Honestly, don't worry about ants. I get so many messages every year. What do I do about these black ants laying eggs on my inner cover? I don't do anything. I just shake them off if they bother me. Uh, generally, I don't even mess with them at all, though. Because if they were bothering the bees, the bees would take care of them. If you keep an active and heavy and healthy hive and an appropriately sized cavity, they will have the ability to keep them out if they care. But if they don't care, then they don't care. 
Uh, the ants are not going to cause a problem. They don't feel good crawling on your hands or whatever, but other than that, they're not an issue. Um, spiders, same thing. A spider will eat a bee every once in a while, not a big loss to a colony. The reason I do add them here is that every single year in this yard over the last three years, I found black widow spiders underneath uh, covers of these hives. So be mindful of that and be you know, aware of where you're grabbing on your hives so you don't grab a black widow. But don't worry about them uh, as far as the bees. The bees are not concerned. I mean, like I said, they'll probably catch a bee here or there, um, but it's not going to hurt your colony. Here's a picture of a black widow that I found last year with a big old egg sac in the, uh, on the side of that telescoping cover. This is, like I said, probably the fifth widow that I've found in this yard over the last three years. All right, so next up is uh, honeybee parasites. That's going to be a, a separate video because there's a lot to talk about there. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are digging this stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.